Alright, so this is the first spot we're going to review that isn't one of mine, uh, and it's done by Mr. Blue Jewel here, and he's going to be talking about it a little bit as I take it apart, and we'll check out what he's done with some of his connections and how he's routed his bot on the inside. So I'm going to cut away some parts, and we're going to take a quick look at it, and then we'll go rail test it. So first thing I want to check is how his guns are mounted. So let's check the mortar mount. So it looks like the mortar mount is actually mounted directly to a plate, which he's, which he's got going from front to back. Um, it's not out in front, it's actually protected by his other two mega plates, so that's a pretty good mount. Uh, damage going from that plate to anywhere else would go to the mortar first, but since he's got it protected, it's actually alright. And it goes the length of his body, so it sort of functions as split protection. Uh, let's check his other gun mount. So the rail goes to a couple different places. Looks like the rail is going back to a set that joins up to a couple different junctions and then he's got it uh, connected to some movement parts and it goes around to another loop that loops back to the main body. So there's one connection. Uh, his other connection goes up over the top and it goes to his power mod. The other connection goes forward and down through this movement set to the bottom plate and then it also loops back around and then this connection goes down and into it looks like a wing. So it's connected over to the wing so that will remain attached to his rail when it gets shot off. And then it looks like everything else, this plate here doesn't have very many connections used, but he's using it to soak splash on the wings on the side of the bot. So, and it looks like he's got two independent connections for that, so that's totally fine. And they're probably, it's probably being used as a sink as well. So let's start to look into a couple different connections on the inside, and then we'll do some rail testing and see how it functions. So I guess my first question, since I've been doing a lot of talking, is do you have any comments about the particular setup of this bot and what you were trying to achieve and maybe some special things you did with the routing? Anything unusual? Uh, yeah, I'll just try to build a bot that has a motor rail combo because it's pretty good for BA and competitive in general. Uh, why I originally started is, three, uh, is actually two plates set up, so without the top plate over the wings and the bottom plate uh, on the mortar. And then I just decided to add two more, uh, add one more at the bottom. And then afterwards, I still had spare CPU because uh, I built the ball out of uh, normal cubes. So I just added the top plate on the, well, across the wings as well, just so that plasma doesn't destroy the internals easily since the mortar and the plate soaking the hit. And uh, I mean, the front bit is basically a hover chain, as you can see with the green bits going there. But you've got it so synced to So that ensures your... the mortar will... Yeah, and we'll, yeah, we'll see sinks, here, it um, sinks to your uh, front uh, left plate before it reaches your other hover, and then this hover sinks to the uh, uh, front right plate before it reaches the other hover. So they're isolated from one another. Keep talking, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, so that makes sure the mortar always um, able to move, even though you've got stuff going on. And um, there's a few rudders that's weirdly placed. Uh, it's just um, I keep rudders close to uh, movement parts so they can be stable at low health. That one is the one behind the rail. Yep, right there. So. And there should be also another one on top of the propeller. Yep, there's another one. Here's his third rudder. So the three rudders. Uh, the wings are chained together, so you said you had a loop that basically chains the wings together, but then the ring wings also reach yeah. another sink before it hits the other wing. Um, so, right? So basically, I have a chain of wings, and then in the middle that attach the plate, if I remember correctly. Yep. Or it just go. might be a separate connection going to the um, plate itself, and then another chain to the wings. So that one's actually pretty close. Which one does this attach to? I didn't actually see. Is there what what uh, what sink is between these two? That one to the rail. That one's to the rail and the hover, I believe. Okay. Uh, I think that was the one. Cause right. I want to, I still wanted to fly with just the rail hanging there. Yeah, I was trying to figure out which one these sink to. So you said this is a hundred percent around a hundred percent rail efficient, yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go over into custom mode and we'll give it a test. All right, so now we're in custom game mode and we're gonna be testing out the bot. We've got a uh, fully boosted rail over there on Mr. Blue and he's gonna be shooting at his own bot in any particular order, go ahead.
go ahead, kill it. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Eight rails. I mean, you can shoot. All right, so now we're going to do the same test from the side. Go ahead. Alrighty, that's seven, one less from the side, but still pretty good. All right, and one final test from the back. Go ahead, blue. Alrighty, so that was seven again. So eight from the front and seven from the sides. He's also got it set up so that uh, the weapons can survive on their own with the functional movement parts and still be stable. So go ahead and shoot it off till the rail's left. So here we have a, a module with the wing and the rudder still attached, and you can still fly around and be functional and shoot. And this was done purposefully with a uh, end-of-life setup. The mortar has the same support structure. And that's pretty close. You still got your props, but uh, the mortar was held up, and you can still fight like this. All right, and now we're going to test the bot by shooting off all the functional components to see if the movement still survives. Go ahead, shoot through the wings and the module. One more time. One more time. There you go. All right, so to wrap things up here at the end, redundant tick delay priority networks is just a fancy way of saying uh, connecting all your components together with different length chains that prioritize some components taking damage before others. It's best used in conjunction with components that have multiple connection points, like mega weapons or mega shields, because you don't want multiple connections to share one point, and so if that uh, block is removed, it loses the other connections. Um, it's best used in conjunction with mega shields to cover the connections or other large high health components. It's very strong against rail as it's very hard to geometrically hit all of these connections at the same time even when the plates are removed. Although once the plates are removed it's very resistant, very uh, vulnerable to smaller rapid fire weapons that will sever multiple connections very quickly at once. Um, these type of networks can be used in conjunction with block spam as well. You can transfer all the same techniques over to a build that uses blocks and fewer mega plates or other large uh, multi-connection components. Uh, just be sure that you always have a bunch of health out in front to absorb damage before your connections start getting hit. And at that point you would also want to consider just a normal dual mounted system where there's dual mounts running to different points in your body with a single whole body. So just be careful when you use these techniques. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two, and this will be helpful to your building in the future. Everybody have a good time, and Rubicon Ranger out.